Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and I've made a lot of projects that I may want to produce in like bigger numbers. So I need a solution to program and test them. Usually these solutions are bespoke, made by experts who like create stuff for manufacturing. Like people who make a lot of stuff. Makers. I'm a maker, I could make that myself! So I basically want to create a standalone system that does programming and testing of various of products that I would produce or various boards that I would design. So you plug your board in and then you have some sort of menu where you select what you want to do and it does the thing. Okay, uh, how do we do that? Uh, basically we have to find something like as a main computer system that does all like the interface and also the programming and testing, of course, it runs all the programs that we need. And then we need some hardware where we can interface our bespoke hardware. Let's get started with the user interface first. Okay, I don't want to bore you with the details. Let's cut to future Clem and explain how the thing came together and uh, what it will be. I hope he finished it. Okay, future Clem here. Um, well, I did a few things. So I've made a touch interface this time. So no switches and stuff. It's all on one single touch screen. And because I'm very bad in programming like real graphical user interfaces, I made a TUI, a text user interface. But it's not text that you type in. It's still a touch screen interface, but it's made in Textual, which is a Python framework where you can basically make GUIs, but they're actually running in the terminal. So that was quite a learning experience. Uh, yeah, check it out. So my TUI runs in the terminal. You can actually run this without even having to install the, like the graphical desktop environment. You can run this on Raspberry Pi OS Lite, 32-bit uh, version, but then it loses the touch functionality, basically. You can still navigate this with a keyboard, uh, but a mouse won't work because the drivers and stuff are basically not implemented in the version that has no graphical user interface. So if you want to look it a bit better, like I did, and uh, make the touch stuff work, then you need to have the X server installed. I actually installed that afterwards when I found out that it doesn't work solely on a pure terminal. So all you can see is actually a pure Python script that is done with uh, the textual framework. You find that info on textualize.io. I recently discovered it and it has been mind blowing and it opened up so much new options for building like user interfaces for me. So what I did is basically you have a window where you can select the firmware and the testware that you want to utilize in your design. You can select tool chains, the ports, and then basically run all the tests and it even has these cool notification pop-ups every time you select something new and also like a little uh, log under every file change and stuff. So it was quite a journey to build that. But what do you think? I think this looks pretty professional. Yeah, a snappy GUI needs a lot of horsepower. Or does it? This all runs on a Raspberry Pi 3, not 3 plus, not a 4, not a 5, that's a 3. So <laughs> it doesn't really need much horsepower to run. Of course, others would be a bit more snappy. They would compile faster. But for compiling, oh yeah, did I mention? This thing compiles the Arduino sketches that you use, or you can flash pre-compiled hex files. So compiling, of course, is dependent on the CPU speed. So that takes quite a bit. But if I'm only using it to flash one device after the other, I would only flash pre-compiled hex files anyway. So I could compile them on another PC and then ship them over or I could compile directly on a device, whatever I would like to do first. Or even <gasps> compile a specific Arduino sketch for different platforms on my programming thing. Yeah, that's pretty easy. I just have to select a different tool chain and a different port, and then I can basically compile uh, the Eno sketch for that microcontroller and then load it up to that specific microcontroller. Uh, how does it do that? Well... The other critical software component in this project is the Arduino command line IDE. So Arduino slash CLI, if you want to Google that. This is basically the Arduino IDE, but it's only in the terminal. There is no graphics to it, but it has, um, I think, all the functionality. Maybe some little aspects are missing, but basically it's the same thing 
but it runs in the terminal. And if something runs in the terminal, you can also access that via commands from another program, like from a Python script that I did. Turned out, it's not as easy to use uh, if you just like use subprocesses and uh, or os.system uh, commands. Um, I've used a little framework that is called PyDuino CLI. Sadly, the documentation is, let's say, minimal. So I could only basically use standard ways to compile. Uh, this might or might not bite me in the butt later. Uh, but it works for now. And to prove that uh, it works really on based on the Arduino ID, let's flash an Arduino Mega with it. Oh, so now you've already seen the awesome case that I built. Well, that wasn't my first try. My first idea was to use a laser cut case because like big cases and 3D printing that usually takes a lot of time. Turns out laser cutting big warp sheets and then trying to glue them together uh, to make a functional piece uh, works, but it's also very time consuming. And on top, I have to take this thing to Electronica this year. Uh, so this will probably not survive the transport. So I made a 3D printed case. That's it. It couldn't be a clamp project if there wasn't some custom circuit board involved. Well, not just this one, but actually multiples. So this is the base board that connects to the Raspberry Pi. And it has a lot of integrated circuits on here. That's because what we do is dynamic routing of the signals. Another board will plug into this. This is then bespoke to the project we're actually testing or programming. And that will be individually designed for each project. But this one has to have the functionality of getting all the lines to all the pins that we need during our testing procedures, which we script in Python. So let's check this out and how that routing works in KiCad. Welcome to my computer. This is KiCad and this is a very simple board. That's basically the example project that I made for this. It's just an 80 tiny 1616 and it's connected to a lot of pins to the outside world, has its own voltage regulator. So basically it's an easier way to use an AT tiny because it breaks all the pins out to the Arduino pins that you would actually use in your code and names them. So it's a bit easier. Uh, but that's not the main project. The main project is on a different sheet. Behold, a quite complicated one. So this is basically the main interface board that routes all the signals from the Raspberry Pi to your interface board and then to your DOT. So what it does is basically it takes in all the Raspberry Pi pins. This is the normal Raspberry Pi pinout. And then uh, with a little bit of voltage regulation and stuff like that, we go to this complex. So we have a few pins that we actually use with the Raspberry Pi, zero data, zero clock, zero uh, clock latch and stuff, output enables, stuff like that. Uh, that is basically all just used to uh, make a choice on all of these data lines here. So we have to set these lines in a specific way to give the pins the right direction to where they have to be connected to. These are analog uh, multiplexers, so they can take in an analog signal and route it to different places. So it goes from A to A0, A1, A2, blah, 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 all the way down. I've specifically connected these two specific pins here. So you can see test point A, B, C, and D. These are A2C ports and UART ports. That means I have hardware UART and A2C that I can route to different points on my DOTs. And also I can use these, of course, like normal GPIOs and just test normal GPIO functionality. So with these shift registers, I set the addresses that these pins will connect to. So I need to clock in a specific number to get to each base. This is basically done with a matrix where all the numbers are uh, locked. For now, I just hard coded the stuff. <laughs> so there's no dynamic routing in my code yet in my test script. But uh, yeah, <laughs> so uh, this connects them to this connector, which has uh, the same number of pins as a Raspberry Pi connector. Uh, just for simplicity, but it doesn't have the same pinouts. So we have different options for powering and then depending on where we route our signals, they will connect to these rows here. So we take one pin from each of the sections and 
yeah, basically that's how we connect. So we only can connect between point A and B, A and C, A and D, B and D, B and C, B and A, all the permutations, but you can't connect to two pins that are both on point A, for example. Okay, <laughs> so this dynamically routes all the pins, but how are they now accessing the pins on the DUT? Okay, here comes the bespoke part for every project. So for every new device you design, you make one of these. Uh, this basically is an interface for programming. So you have the programmer built into here. This is a UPDI programmer. I found this not to be the most reliable design, so that might need a few iterations. I have a USB connector for like industrial equipment or stuff that gets plugged in a lot of times. I always use USB-B sockets and not C. They just hold up better, are easier to solder, cheaper, so why not? We have a little dip switch that sets different modes for the outputs and also enables the power to the device. These are pogo pin connectors. They basically let your board sit on top of them and then you uh, clamp them down and they can wiggle a little bit. So they always make perfect contact to your board without having to solder them. And now these here are all buffers. So they're non-inverting buffers. That means signal comes in here, uh, gets buffered, gets put out the same way over here. So you don't draw the power directly from these signals. You draw the power from an external power source. So all these LEDs will show uh, the current status of the device. Uh, so if a pin gets high, also this LED will light up. So you can see what your board is doing during testing or just for demo purposes, basically. It's just a handy thing to have. You can see here, some are unconnected. That is because the device that we're testing doesn't have that many connectors. So that's also why these connectors are basically only doing power and not have any of the GPIOs connected to them. And that is all the hardware. Now we put that into uh, some functional thing and build it up and assemble all the stuff. Looks quite interesting to solder. A little side note. Did you notice the pattern of the bolts here? That is a Raspberry Pi pinout. So that means if you have a Raspberry Pi and use it basically headless or have your screen detached from it and not like I do in the video, then you can basically stack all these directly on top of a Raspberry Pi and you don't have to worry about uh, some weird interconnects that you have to solder. So this basically would make it even more compact, but then the screen is external. To put all these electronic pieces functionally together, I need a few 3D printed pieces, just print these in some leftover PLA that I had. And I use these fashioned clamps that people mostly use for woodworking and other purposes to snap my DUT in place. DUT means device under test. So if I plug that in, into its bespoke baseboard, then I have access to all of the pins. They go to the routing board and then get routed wherever they need to go. So during my test procedure, it basically connects to the right pins, uh, emits signals, checks if the right signals come back, and then will conclude if the test has passed or failed. And with our UI, we can basically select a multitude of test procedures for different devices or even different procedures for one device if you want. So it's very flexible <laughs> and it got very complicated very quickly. Okay, let's try this out. We are basically just selecting the test procedure that we want. I made a simple uh, script that's just called test.py. Select that, click on select file, then it's imported basically, select our tool chain and everything, and then we just run the test. So it will basically look uh, to route the uh, signals to the right uh, points on the PCB. So for example, the pins that I've actually selected for the routing are UART and uh, I2C capable. So you can test UART and I2C functionality between the Pi and the device. Uh, so you know that these ports are actually working and not just emitting random signals. Uh, but you can also use the same pins uh, to route them to different locations for GPIO testing. So when the test has uh, been run, we get a notification on the screen with a little pop-up and then we know, oh, the board is fine or it failed. Yeah, and now for the programming. So programming might be a bit more complicated. Um, 
I'm using the Arduino command line interface. That means it has support for basically all the Arduino compatible stuff on there. It is quite easy to install real Arduino boards and then you can flash real Arduino boards and compile for them. Uh, for third party, it might be a bit more difficult, but usually you just enter into your preferences uh, the source for where you get all the descriptions for the boards. Turns out the MCU that I'm using here, the 801616, that's in a package that seems to be maintained, but for some reason the server seems to be down. So I couldn't get that directly onto there. I downloaded the package manually and then uploaded it via SCP to my device to get them all in there. And it seems that everything is in there, but it doesn't want to flash. Yeah. On the back of the device, I have mounted a fan and two legs to make it stand at a roughly a 50 degree angle. So you can easily use it and manipulate it. Also, you can easily plug in the power cord on the back. I've used the meanwhile power supply with four and a half amps. So this gives me plenty of power at 12 volts, by the way, to power the screen. And the screen then does the power conversion for the Raspberry Pi. This is a Multicom screen. I've linked it in the uh, show notes on the Element 14 community page because I love that screen. I've used it in many, many projects <laughs> and a lot of people are using it for like industrial equipment and stuff. That is so handy to basically plug everything into the screen and the Raspberry Pi runs off of it. Over the years, I have seen a lot of bespoke uh, programming and testing solutions, usually separated from each other. This is more focused on the maker crowd, people that make like a few boards, program and test them and ship them out to people, uh, basically, or people who are in the design process and finding out the right procedures to do their thing. Because the, the custom part here is always interchangeable, you can adapt that to any of your project and the tool chain and everything. It's completely up to you because it's all open source and you can do whatever you want with it. So if you want to download all the files for this and get the parts list and stuff, then hop on over to the Element 14 community. It's all linked there. You can also go there to connect with me and all the other hosts. And I gotta go. There's another project waiting for me. But first I have to bring this thing somewhere. Hi, I'm Clem with the Element 14 community. You may know me from our YouTube channel, Element 14 Presents. And you can see this project here at Electronica that I made at the funnel booth. And also you can see it on our YouTube channel. It is basically a professional testing and flashing solution for your own products. As you can see them at some booths at this show, but it's completely homemade based on a Raspberry Pi, the Arduino command line IDE and the Multicom screen. It does all the things the big ones do, but homemade. So check it out at our booth and also check out the video that we do on it on Element 14 Presents.